Welcome to Scrunchy Time. I'm Nicole Hegstead, your fertility advocate. After six years of infertility and three miscarriages, I decided that I needed to become the advocate for my own body. If you're exhausted from struggling to get pregnant and want to know more about how I can help, check out my website at www.nicolehegstead.com. And I'm Bridget May, your children's health expert. My son was born with a heart condition that led to three open heart surgeries, cath labs, a tracheostomy, and a ventilator. After being fed up with mixed opinions, I became my children's own advocate. If your child's health is lacking, then check out my website at www.bridgetmay.com to find out more how I can help. Put your hair up and pay attention while we discuss today's hottest topics concerning female hormones and healthy kiddos. We aren't silky. We aren't crunchy. We're We're scrunchy. scrunchy. Hello, and welcome to our fourth episode on Scrunchy Time. So today we're going to be talking about overall environmental toxins. Uh, it's going to be just kind of an overview. We're not going to delve deep into anything or talk about real, we're, we're not really even going to talk about a lot of the solutions, um, just kind of a broad overview. Um, and if any of these really stand out to you, we would just ask that send us a note, tell us what you're interested in hearing more about, and we can dive deeper into why they're a problem and how to fix them in your personal life and that kind of thing. So that's kind of what we're going for in today's episode. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and this is like big and I don't want anybody to get like overwhelmed because it definitely can get like overbearing and scary. You know, I mean, plastic thinking of plastic alone can like freak you out to no end to think of where it is and everything. Like just remember like God is gracious and we're still living and we just have to do like the best we can. You know, we just keep improving and keep making these small changes. I honestly, just before we started this, me and Nicole were just talking about this, like any one little thing could change anything in your house. Changing your plastic water bottles to a glass water bottle could change everything. You know, Um, you just never know. And so we just have to keep pushing forward and being our own doctors and finding out what needs to change because we are clearly in a health crisis in our world. (laughs) So, um, so yeah, so we're just going to start listing some things off, saying the negative things about it, and um, we might throw out some reasons of how you change. We don't want this one to be too long and freak you out all day long, but uh, but yeah, we're just going to go over it. And yeah, take it, you want to take it away and start with yeah, something? Sure. Yeah, yeah, and I was just going to add to that too, that um, it's really important to take it slow. Um, Mm -hmm. I started down this aspect of removing environmental toxins from my family's household uh, as soon as I got married. And we've been married six and a half years. And I can finally say that within the last year, I have mastered all of the chemicals that are in our house where I finally feel comfortable with all the chemicals I'm using. Um, Plastic is still a problem for me. I was talking earlier with Bridget about how um, Ziplocs are miracles. (laughs) Yeah. They are miracles. And how do you replace a miracle, right? <laughs> like Ziplocs are the most amazing thing ever. And so I'm still working on that. So just take one thing at a time and yeah. replace it, find a solution for it. And slowly, you know, maybe a decade from now, maybe two, you'll be happy with what's in your home. But it's it's the small things that add up after a long period of time that matter. So, yep. so yeah. So and I it will still make an impact. You know, even if you don't make that goal in 10 years and your kids are in college, they will remember exactly every little different thing you did and why you did it. And they can carry on too. You know, they can carry on in their own lives with that same journey. Yeah, it took us generations to get here. Exactly. It's going to take us a while to get ourselves back out. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, 100%. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, BPAs. I'll just jump right into that since we already kind of touched on that. Um, BPAs are endocrine disruptors. They basically, your endocrine system is the system in your body that creates your hormones. Um, so your pituitary gland, your thyroid gland, your adrenals, it's just three out of the eight glands that are in your body, um, that create hormones. And what BPAs do is they act as like estrogen in your body and your body can't handle extra estrogen like that. And so, um, it can throw off your, your hormones as far as your fertility goes. Um, your body can also take a hold of those estrogens and it says, I don't know what to do with this. And it'll shove it in a fat cell. And then that's where a lot of people in America are having trouble losing weight because their body says, you know, you're exercising super hard. You're eating barely nothing. 
But if I open that fat cell, there's a toxin inside. And so I'm protecting you by keeping that locked in there. So I don't know what to do, what to live on. And then that throws your hormones off even more. And so, and, and you can't lose weight. It's impossible and very frustrating. Trust me, I've been there. This is why I am overweight. And I have, am, I have lost a lot of weight actually this year since finding this out and starting to detox and clean all of that out. But, um, but that's what we should be looking at, not running more and eating less. So um, like I said, it it just affects a whole host of your health, these BPAs and BPAs are in your plastic. Um, A lot of people have started trying to switch over to BPA free, but the problem with BPA free is BPA free plastics contain a chemical called BPSs and they're just as bad to your endocrine system. And they thought that they didn't leach from the plastics but now they're doing tests and they're finding tons of BPSs in people's urine. So it is definitely getting into our system as well. And we need to just go back to class and metal is bad too. Like we don't want to go to, you know, lead and steel and all that. Cause you can get heavy metal. Toxins. Heavy metal. Yeah. So <laughs> ca- I say cast iron and glass. That's what we've had for centuries. That's what's worked for centuries. Go back to cast iron and glass. Look at what your great, 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 great grandmother would have used and use that if you can. So yeah. anyway, I'll pass it over to you. I've yeah. talked enough about BPAs here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and as in our previous podcast, we talked about that being in our cloth diapers and our pads and all of that too. Um, if you haven't listened to that, go check out our previous podcasts. Um, they're in, in there too. They're everywhere. Yes. yes. My glass. <laughs> so um yeah so I'll talk a little bit about one of my big pet peeves that drives me nuts is like farming and food and all of that like we're constantly throwing chemicals you know um near our house we have fields everywhere and these tractors and planes go by and just we live in the Midwest and it's so windy here and the chemicals go everywhere. And they're like, Oh, it does nothing. But you know how many times I've heard of like the neighbor's chickens dying or their dogs getting sick. And it's like, and this isn't affecting me, you know, it's, it's very frustrating. And so, you know, obviously, um, that that's our food and not around here. We don't grow our food, our food here, but you know, in some places that's your food. And, um, that, so, you know, you've heard the whole story about buy organic and all that in the store and yes, organic's better, um, you know, but it's still like it's in all of our food. And that's where then we process our food and down to even the way we process it produces chemicals that are bad for us. So obviously we need to go back to just eating raw fruits and vegetables. If you can grow it yourself, obviously best option, not always possible. Um, but, you know, if you can buy organic again better but if you just eat the fruits and vegetables just eat them it's you're going to be way better off than buying the processed lunchable and whatever and it's way cheaper (laughs) we've priced that out many times right yes (laughs) we won't go down that argument but yeah so that's that's a big one that is my pet peeve is like our food and our farming and everything we have so many processes to it like I just I actually shudder to think actually how many processes like a tomato goes through to get where it is. And then who, who really buys fresh tomatoes? Buy canned. We all buy canned. Like, you know, it's it's crazy. So yeah. So that's a, that's a big one that bothers me a lot. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, another topic that really, uh, affects me and, uh, has bugged me for a long time. I think I actually got you started on it is the toxicity in our water. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you did. Yeah. Yeah. Like how, how bad our water is for us. Um, and even bottled water, like it's even, I've even heard that some companies bottled water is just tap water. Um, it's, it's disgusting. Glorified tap water. I've heard that. Yeah. (laughs) It's bad. It's, it's pretty bad. So, um, it's got fluoride, chlorine, lead, mercury, PCBs, arsenic, um, perchlorite, dioxins are more endocrine disruptors. Dioxins come from bleach. Uh, so that's probably coming from the chlorine that's in the water. So if you're using bleach, definitely try and make that one of your first ones that you cut out because it's, it's really bad. And actually, dioxins are created when bleach is at room temperature. So when do you use bleach? Do you ever keep bleach at any other temperature than room temperature? 
No. So you have I that. I actually didn't know that. That's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. So it's like, why? Yes. You have dioxins in your home and they're airborne. They, they get, it's when the bleach gets airborne at room temperature. And so you're literally breathing in dioxins and it's really bad for you. DDT, that's what we use to kill all the bugs um, in the summer. HCBs, Dactol, MTBE, and then birth control. They have said that so many women are on birth control now that they're, it's being urinated out and they cannot clean it out of the water. And so we're actually all on the pill at any given time. It just amazes me that we have children at all in America. <laughs> Like, it really does. I have thought that so cool. many times. I'm just like, how, 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 how and how are they alive? alive? Yes. And that's the other thing. Like, how are we, you know, we talk about like, oh, I'm overweight or, oh, I'm sick or, oh, I'm mad because of all this stuff. But like, how am I alive because of all this mm -hmm. stuff? Like True. there is so much stuff, you know? Yep. So God's <laughs> grace and our ignorance. <laughs> he created an amazing body. Like our bodies are amazing to be able to, I was fed baby formula, which has estrogen in it as a baby. I was given Gerber baby food, which also has estrogen in it as a, a young toddler. From there until now, I've been exposed to BPAs, horrible water, glue, you name it, these horrible toxins. And I've been able to get pregnant three times. I haven't been able to carry to term, but it still blows me away that my body has been able to get pregnant at all. So mm -hmm. God created a body that can fight against this stuff. And there's definitely hope. So in this gloom and doom message, there's definitely, definitely hope a little bit there. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And that is, and in all that we are getting pregnant and still like functioning. So yeah. clearly, you know, it's not as bad as we make it out in our head, but it is. And we see the consequences of it. In my case, my kid had a heart condition. Mm -hmm. You know, we're miscarrying babies. Babies are born at 24 weeks. You have no idea how common that is. Like these things do need to change, but God's still providing. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. So in all of that, like, yeah, the water and the chemicals and everything, um, you talked about bleach a little bit, like, oh my gosh. So yeah, bleach, I've switched all over. Um, actually was forced to, <laughs> um, because when Fritz got his trach, <clears throat> no bleach in the house. I literally went, okay, what do you use to sanitize the house? I mean, I was the mom who we came home from anything. Everything got Lysol, the car seat, everything, our clothes, we stripped and we threw it all in the wash, you know, like that was me. Cause I had this highly medically needed child and that's what you had to do. So yeah. So the bleach like alone, I, when I've gone back to using that, I actually had an incident with mold earlier this year and, um, I broke down and used Tylex and I about died. Like I literally was in the bathroom cleaning. I left the door open. I think I even had the window open, honestly. And I was, I was pregnant and I just like, I almost blacked out. And all I was doing was I sprayed and then I was scrubbing down the, the bathtub. Like the fumes were so bad. And now I feel that way when I go to anyone else's house, like I can go in and I can tell you, you use bleach or something. I just, it just, it suffocates you. And then I'm like, well, no wonder we have asthma. Mm -hmm. I mean, no wonder we have allergies. No wonder, you know, like clearly this is not good stuff, but yeah, the, the fumes alone from bleach are just horrific. It's awful. It's horrible. And then, yeah, now I know why they tell you not to have that in your house when you have a kid with a trach. I mean, could you imagine not having a nose to filter that? <sighs> burn your lungs. Like yeah. I do. I remember, I just remember bending over that bathtub and being like, I have to leave this room. And I did. And I left and I kind of did like the whole dizzy thing. And I was like, I can't do that again. And then yeah. I, just, um, I felt so bad for the baby. I was like, what did I do? <laughs> but you know, um, so, but yeah, then I had my mom help me after that. And uh, yeah, it's, it's bad stuff, but it's in everything too. And like, just like that, it's not just bleach. Then it's in this cleaner and that cleaner. And it just, our household cleaners trickle down from there. Tide is awful in our laundry detergent and people use Clorox wipes. I used to carry Clorox wipes in my diaper bag, you know, it's awful. It's awful stuff. Yeah. So definitely household cleaners are something to look at too. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I noticed 
the more I've gone off, you know, I'm like totally away from those toxic cleaners now. And the couple of times where I've had, um, I had a job over the summer where I had to touch bleach. Um, mm -hmm. And the first couple of times I did it and my hands like were burning. It was crazy. Like they just got this crazy burning sensation. And after that I wore gloves um, because I was just like, I can't even bear to touch these. It, it was those Clorox wipes, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. once it really soak into your hands for some reason, yep. like, you can feel it soaking into your hands. It, yeah. Crazy, crazy stuff. I know. And seeing that just your body, that's again, ignoring your intuition and your body listening to those signs and signals, because I mean, when you just cover that up and just constantly use those all the time, you would never know, but take it away and your body will tell you, you know, that doesn't happen when you quit eating an apple. Right. And then give it back. You don't take an apple away for a year and then try to eat it again and throw up. Right. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, yeah. That's one thing I noticed with those Clorox wipes. My fingers get pruny way faster than like mm -hmm. if you're in the yeah. shower, you know, which mm -hmm. means you're absorbing it. Like why are there, why are my fingers getting pruny? Like from wiping down a table, you know? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. I know we completely ignore that our skin is like our biggest absorbing organ. It is. Yeah. And it touches everything, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We completely ignore that, which leads to um, makeup and facial cleansers and lotions. Who doesn't? I know I used to get out of the shower and gob the Lubriderm on and everything else and shampoo and goodness. And in a lot of those, a lot of those um, lotions, there's even alcohol, mm -hmm. which isn't necessarily horrible compared to some of the other stuff, but it dries your skin out enough that you continue, you, like it makes you put it on more and more and more. More and more. And more. Chapstick is that way for me. Yes. I know I have to yes. really be careful on the chapstick I buy because I end up with chap, more, worse lips than I started with. Yes. <laughs> Glistex is the worst brand you can buy. Glistex mm. is created to dry out your lips. And the other nine ingredients in it are carcinogens. And it's just, it, it blows me away. Like we were talking earlier in a different, um, episode about um how is the is the side effects worth what you're dealing yeah. with you know I'd rather have chapped lips than cancer sorry exactly <laughs> that's one thing I'll put up with if I have to but there's lots of really good natural I mean just coconut oil just put coconut yep. oil on your lips if you have to you know most generally for me it's water I'm dehydrated yes you yes. know and in the winter the moment you get dehydrated that is the first thing to go is your lips yep yep, yep. I'm exactly. dealing with that right now we went out hunting and <laughs> wind blown and yeah yeah bad, yeah but yeah so yeah 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 um gosh what else I know like so I was gonna talk about birth control a little bit too oh yeah um since yeah, it's kind of up, up my alley no you're fine you're fine <laughs> um so yeah it kind of bounces off the the water but birth control is just a huge toxin that is prescribed in mass in our society um it's like the answer to everything it totally is it, it well it isn't but it's totally treated no they way. say it is yeah, yeah like yeah. in for everyone it's, yeah yeah so 12 and then on exactly like 12 year olds have horrible periods you know a 12 year old has a horribly painful heavy flow period and her mom is worried and takes her in and the doctor has to put her on the pill i actually had this happen to a sister and my mom was like no she'll deal with her horrible period and I mean, her, we yeah. should have been looking for other issues because that, that's the sign of a hormone imbalance. A 12-year-old, any woman should not have horribly painful, heavy flowing periods, but fix the hormone. Don't mask it up with, you yeah. know, basically you're not ovulating and so you just won't have a period, you know, exactly. because the issue too is, and I don't understand why the doctors don't understand this, someday that woman's going to want to get pregnant. And so she's going to have to go off the pill to get pregnant. And then she's just going to have these horrible periods again. Like, what are you planning to do then? You know, mm -hmm. you've just completely covered this up until that time. So another huge problem with birth control is it tricks your body. What, it, what it's doing is it makes your body think you're pregnant. And then when you go off the pill or you take the sugar pill, um, it, it's releasing all those hormones. And so you, you, ha you bleed. You're not having an actual period but you bleed. Um, so that way it's really for your peace of mind. Um, when they designed the birth control pill, they realized so that you never really ovulated. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, they realized that women associate not being pregnant with having their period. And so 
if a woman never had her period for years and years and years, it might be disconcerting to her. And so that's why they created the gap where you shed your lining and all of that, but you still never ovulated. You're not getting rid of an egg. Um, like I said, your body thinks you're pregnant. And so essentially you're giving your body a miscarriage once a month and you're wow. making your body think that it went through a miscarriage once a month. And wow. How traumatic. It's a huge toll to play on your body. You want to talk about breast cancer. You want to talk about like ovarian stress. cancer and stress and underlying all. subconscious stress. Absolutely. And why your hormones are messed up when you go off the birth control pill. Cause they're all screwed up now when you're, when you're taking it. So definitely a horrible, so horrible. out of touch with your body. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if, if you're on the pill and you want to avoid pregnancy, reach out to me. We can talk about natural ways to do that. Mm -hmm. um, if you were on the pill and you're trying to get pregnant, reach out to me. We can talk about natural ways to do that. Um, that's, that's a big thing that I fight against is, is the pill and trying to minimize the damage that's been done to our nation's women with birth control. So, yeah. Yeah, that's horrible. And I mean, when simply like, you know, for 12 year olds and stuff, I know I deal with children, you know, going into that, like so many inflammatory ways your body acts out with that is answered so simply in everything, you know, just yeah. there's so many things you can cut out. I mean, sugar alone, I know was one for me when I had a period, you know, early on that would affect it and go on from there, you know, and, and yeah. it's crazy too. our comp the companies market to kids, you know, you know, it's just, it's awful. And they, <laughs> a funny story. My three-year-old loves mac and cheese. It's like the end everything revolves around mac and cheese and we we buy better mac and cheese and but when we go to the store he wants craft mac and cheese mm. like he's like no mommy that one that one and it's just it drives me insane because the box is brighter prettier you know more eye appealing and that's what they do to all of us and it just they make you think this is bright and shiny and beautiful over here and it's gonna be wonderful and it's not at all in reverse, I have found too that people are starting to box things, you know, usually natural organic things are more in those dull, earthy, mm -hmm. subdued tones. And um, there have been a few things that I have found now where it's, it looks like that on the outside, it's earthy and uh -huh. cream colored and looks like Annie's boxes, you know, the way that they yeah. do that. And you pick it up and you start reading it and it's got, it's a horrible product. And you're like, why is this package like this? Like as an adult, you feel like, what? Like I've been tricked, you know, <laughs> like, but it's true. They've started doing that too now where they've picked up that adults are, are reaching for those more subdued tones because they know that that's generally healthier, but it, it isn't necessarily. So obviously continue reading your labels and checking out your brands before you just buy something. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. So, so yeah. there's definitely a lot out there to Absolutely. watch for in like almost all areas of your life. You know, I, I kind of giggle when some people say like, yeah, I'm completely healthy and wonderful and doing all the things. And I'm like, you're not living out in the middle of woods yet. So, <laughs> cause well, it's I'm everywhere. Constantly. Like I'm constantly learning about, mm -hmm. things. yeah, I'm constantly exactly. old and informed and I'm trying to have an open mind of, oh yeah, now I need to work on that. Yeah. What's next? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. and even, even the things I do know about are a constant battle, you know, yes. there are things that I know about that they make it into my home and I'm like, oh, I should have known better. You know, yep. didn't even think about it. Or that. we have to learn that way too. You know, I feel like, you know, like we were saying, you go back to things and you're like, oh wait, this yeah. is bad. That's you know, why I went off of that. yeah. So it's it's gonna come back because you didn't realize how bad it was when you took it out in the first place. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and there are times too where it's just like whatever, just uh -huh. mac and cheese. You know, your husband is like, please, can we get Captain Crunch? Please, 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 please. You know, sure, fine. <laughs> yeah, and then <laughs> didn't both, you throw that box out? Like, yeah, it was gone. It was, yeah. We're both literally like one of us is on the toilet and the other one's standing there, like, hurry hurry you know and it's like yeah we should not have eaten this hello we knew that <laughs> yeah so not good not good no. i yeah. found you usually learn your mistakes on the toilet usually that's where it's like <laughs> okay 
should not have done that. I know. One way or the other. It's either, for me, it's constipation. So. Yep. It's like, oh, wait, I didn't do that today. <laughs> That's why I have a headache. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Anyway, but yeah, we'd love to hear from you guys. Like, I know we really briefly touched on even some like more larger, like we could still go into depth in each one of these topics. So if there's something in your home, you like feel that nagging, like this isn't good, like, or what, just reach out to us and we'll either, um, you know, do another episode for everyone else so we can all learn and all find out. And if we don't know, we are going to find the answer for you because you know, we are, we've done this for a couple of years, but we're also still learning. Like, she, like Nicole said, there is always something more. Nicole say something. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, and it goes vice versa. Like we all want to know and share with everyone else. So if you're wondering about it, somebody else is too, or we even are, and we are going to, through all our vast resources, find the right answer. We will answer you back and make it a podcast, make a blog post so that everybody knows because it's, if it's bothering you, you need to listen to that. Absolutely. That's, that's Absolutely. you know, whether it's you physically or your children. I even know, like, as a mom, I look at my kids and I'm just like, that just doesn't settle right. That isn't right. And yeah. listen to that. Yeah. Don't listen to the doctors that are just like, well, everybody else does it, so it must be okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that's not how to do that. So. Absolutely. So yeah, yeah. I think but yeah, that's all for today. Thank so. you for tuning in and we will talk to you in a couple of weeks. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us on today's podcast. If you'd like to know more about our programs or watch the podcast in video form, you can visit our websites. Where we also share links and resources concerning the different topics that we have discussed. Check me out at www.nicolehegstead.com. And check me out at www.bridgetmay.com. See See you you next time. time.